good afternoon uh, viewers and uh, listeners of concerned citizens media uh, welcome back again uh, nice to have you here so i uh, i have some news to share with you uh, also the genocide watch uh, a general assessment and a recommendation uh, about the situation uh, in Ethiopia uh, and at the end I have one video uh, to share with you uh, is a protest uh, uh, happening in a, a German uh, Frankfurt German by the European uh, uh, Oromo diaspora community so let's get started. Welcome back again. Here are the news and uh, concerned citizens media comment for June 5, 2021. <clears throat> Another killing in Wolaga, Oromia, Ethiopia. On Thursday, June 3rd, 2021. Ethiopian government forces killed a teenager named uh, Bikila Imam. These government forces also dragged, dragged his body on the street for a while and refused his proper burial. No reason was provided for this brutal killing by Ethiopian government. Similar, similar crimes have been occurring repeatedly in Oromia region, and so far, nobody accounted for these serious crimes. The Eritrean government embassy in Washington, D.C. released a statement denying Eritrean military presence in Oromia region. The embassy statement said that there are coordinated campaigns misinformation against the Eritrean forces and the Eritrean government. Oromo Liberation Front military commander Jal Marro confirmed the presence of Eritrean defense forces in Oromia and their engagement in conducting grave human rights violations on peaceful Oromos in West Wallega, Oromia. But the Eritrean government denied. So they denied about their presence in Tigray region. Now they are denying about their presence in Oromia, different areas and their brutal operations. They keep denying because no penalty for that. European Oromo diaspora community held a massive rally in Frankfurt, Germany today to denounce Prime Minister Abi Ahmed administration and called on European Union to act and end the atrocities happening, especially in Oromia and the Tigray regions. They condemned the Prime Minister and his Prosperity Party for hijacking the revolutions. Thousands and thousands of Oromo youths uh, sacrificed for it. Abi Ahmed is a killer. Abi must go, Abi Ahmed to ICC, Eritrean, Amhara and Ethiopian forces out of Oromia and Tigray, free all Oromo political prisoners, free, free Oromia and Tigray, EU stop supporting the terrorist regime in Ethiopia and many other anti-Abi Ahmed slogans were chanted at this protest. The Tigray diaspora community from different European countries also showed their solidarity with the Oromo community in today's protest. Oromo Americans living in and around the Twin Cities, Minnesota, also uh, known as Little Oromia, demonstrated against the Ethiopian government and supported the United States visa and other restrictions on Ethiopia and Eritrean officials on Friday. The protesters promised to continue the resistance movement until Oromos are free from atrocities 
and other grave human rights violations in Ethiopia. Ethiopian government announced about the start of Eritrean Defense Forces withdrawal from the Tigray region after denying and lying to Ethiopians and the global community about the presence of Eritrean forces in the Tigray region, the Ethiopian government now is confirming the Eritrean forces pulling out of the Tigray region. If this news is true, it will be a breakthrough. It's, it will be a breakthrough for ending uh, various atrocities that have been happening against residents of the Tigray region. So far, this Ethiopian government's news is not yet independently verified by other nations or other global independent media. So the following are the suggestions or comments from concerned citizens media on this development. So the following is from concerned citizens media comment, suggestion about uh, Ethiopia announcing about the uh, start of the Eritrean pulling out of uh, the Tigray region. Uh, as you already know from our reporting and the various other media report, there is no credibility. There is no credibility about Ethiopia saying uh, something and, uh, uh, you know, so they are not trustworthy from past uh, uh, or from previous statement. They say something, but uh, no truth to it. And, uh, they don't keep their uh, promise. And uh, so there is no guarantee about these Eritreans uh, who is drawing or start pulling out. Actually, the opposite is happening. Uh, they are changing the uniform uh, to Ethiopian uh, army and uh, uh, you know, using them into Gray region plus uh, dispatching them into uh, Oromia according to various uh, media resources. So there is no truth and uh, our, our uh, leaders, the leaders of Ethiopia, the current leaders, they are liars and uh, they don't uh, feel ashamed about lying in front of uh, various media. Openly they lie. They lied about the casualties, they lied about the war in Tigray, they lied about the presence of uh, uh, Eritrean forces, including uh, religious leaders. Shamefully, shamefully, especially if you are a religious leader, you are not supposed to lie, you are you're supposed to control it. But everybody, when Abi lie, all the followers lie. That is the situation. So there is lack of credibility. Uh, so that's why we say no uh, independent media confirm about the pulling of uh, Eritrean forces from the Tigray region. Okay. So now, based on this, these are my suggestions uh, for uh, from from concerned citizens media. <clears throat> One or it's just uh, Ethiopians and the global community must demand apologies from Ethiopia's military and civilian officials for knowingly misleading and lying about this serious Ethiopian sovereignty breach by the Eritrean Defense Forces. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed Ambassador Dina Mufti, Diakon uh, Daniel Kubrit, I don't know how to say it with Diakon in English, Mr. Sadiq Abraha, General Brahanu Jula, General Bacha Dabale, and other Prosperity Party officials and government media and pro-prosperity independent media all must apologize for broadcasting this fabricated and misleading information to the world and to, to, to Ethiopians. So that we must demand apologies. Ethiopians and the global community, we must demand. If we, Ethiopians 
and the global community do not demand the well-deserved apologies from these Ethiopian officials and their closely associated media, we are approving their lies and misleading propaganda. We're going to be part of them if we don't demand. Next time when they come to the stage, can you please apologize for misleading us, for telling us lies? So Ethiopian journalists, Ethiopian citizens, the global community must demand apologies, apologies from military and civilian leaders, current leaders, including the prime minister. They must demand. If not, we're going to be part of the lies and the misinformation. So we have to avoid that by demanding apologies. Okay, the second suggestion or comment. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and his senior military and the civilian officials must also face treason, face treason charges for inviting a foreign nation, Eritrea, and others to commit war crimes, crimes against humanity, and a genocide against Ethiopian citizens in the Tigray region. They must be accounted for. They must be accounted for. For inviting the foreign nation. And uh, that's a treason. Okay, the second comment, suggestion. Eritrean defense forces and their dictator Isaiah Afawarki must be held accountable, possibly in the International Criminal Court for all these crimes reported in the Tigray region. The United States, European Union, UK, Canada, and all concerned citizens must continue their efforts and their support toward bringing these criminals to justice. They must be accounted for. They, we, must ne uh, you know, we must not let them go for free. Let them withdraw. It's okay, let them, they have to withdraw to end, you know, uh, the suffering, the atrocities happening in the Tigray, which is a good thing, but they must also account for what they did in Tigray, the looting, the destruction of property, the killing, the rape. They're not, you know, we, we must demand justice for Tigrayan people. We don't let them go for free. So that's a suggestion. Uh, the other one, Tigran residents must be compensated for all deaths, destructions, looting, and other grave human rights violations they have been subjected to by Ethiopian and Eritrean governments under the pretext of law in order operations in the Tigray region. Law in order operation is just a pretext. It's a clear war on the Tigrayan people. So they must be compensated. So these are the suggestions of concerned citizens media on the news about the pulling out, the starting of the withdrawal uh, uh, of Eritrean forces from the Tigray region. As I said, it's a good thing. It should be verified because we don't have any trust from the Ethiopian government because they repeatedly lie. I don't know how you're going to deal with this uh, government. Uh, keep lying. No credibility. All the, you know, the senior members, the military, the civilians, even uh, the religious person like Diakon, Daniel, all of them, they lie. So how are you going to deal? How are you going to deal? How are you going to work with these people, with this government uh, in power, with no credibility? So whatever they say, so this withdrawal should be verified by independent nations or independent government uh, medias, and uh, all the you know the concerned citizens media suggestion should be uh, shared with all concerned global community to make these criminals accountable for what they did in the Tigray region. So we have to demand apologies. We have to demand apologies first to be free ourselves from being part of that. Uh, I know some Ethiopian medians and Ethiopians ignore it. 
ignore it. They are supposed to be the first to demand uh, apologies for these lies and the misleading information from their government. So the global community must demand that. So that is about the pulling of the Eritrean uh, uh, forces from the Tigray region and the common. So now I go to a statement released, uh, the general assessment statement released by Genocide Watch Group. Uh, it's a one page, I will just read it quickly. Then I have other, uh, just a couple of international news. Then we go to the video. Thank you again for your time. Genocide Watch. Uh, Genocide Emergency Alert Ethiopia. Start with this one. Ethnic violence in Ethiopia has escalated since Genocide Watch issued an emergency alert in November 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic allowed Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to consolidate his power. He used COVID-19 to consolidate his power. That's true. His term was extended. National elections were postponed twice, and uh, emergency laws were proposed to restrict freedom of speech. The proposed 2020 election will be held on June 21, 2021. Minorities within Ethiopia, Ethiopian region, regions remain targeted by ethnic regional militia, particularly in the Oromia, Amara, Benishangul Gumuz, Afar, Somalia, and Tigray region. In Amara and Oromia, tension between majority and minority population have resulted in a massacre. The Oromo Liberation Front, the Oromo Liberation Army, OLA, has targeted Amara people in Oromia. On April 19, 2021, the Ethiopian government declared a state of emergency in the Amara region and uh, deployed federal forces. In Benishangul Gumuz, the Gumuz militia has targeted ethnic Oromo, Shinasha, Amara, and Ago minorities. On November 15, 2020, dozens were massacred in attack on a bus in the region. Ethnic attack killed. 100 civilians in December 2020. On April 22, 2021, an armed group killed civilians and took control of Sedal Wereda, Sedal Wereda, Sedal Wereda County, home of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, near the border with Sudan. Sudan opposes Ethiopian government plan to rapidly fill the dam's reservoir. In Tigray, the war that broke out between the Tigrayan People Liberation Front and the Ethiopian government on November 4, 2020 continues. Ethiopian federal troops and Eritrean troops remain in Tigray region. Ahmed and Eritrean President Isaiah Safawarki are united in their, in their belief that the TPLF is the enemy of their respective government. Tigray is now victim to systematic violence with a genocide intent. As, as of April 2021, close to 2,000 victims of massacres of Tigrayans have been identified. On November 23, 2020, Eritrean troops massacred hundreds of Tigrayan people in Aksum, ID cards in the Tigrayan language were replaced by ID cards in Amharic. Mass rape by Eritrean and Ethiopian troops is weaponized and described as a cleansing of bloodlines. Food insecurity affects 5.7 million people. Both Eritrean and Ethiopian troops have prevented delivery of humanitarian aid. As of April 2021, more than 62,000 Ethiopians sought refugee in eastern Sudan because of the violence. On March 17, 2021, the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission and the United Nations agreed to conduct a joint 
inquiry into the crimes against humanity being command, committed in the Tigray region. Genocide Watch considers Ethiopia to be a stage five, which is organization and stage. And stage nine, extermination. Because Ethiopia denies allegation of genocide massacre in Tigray, Genocide Watch also considers Ethiopia to be at stage 10, with, at stage 10, denial. Genocide Watch recommends the following uh, point. So, if you see the report, the report is very, 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 uh, the expression of danger everywhere, really. Danger everywhere. Ethnic cleansing, uh, ethnic tension, uh, conflict between minority and majority, everywhere. Where? Afar, Somalia, Benishangul, Amara, or so no place is no place is you know peace under Abiy Ahmed leadership. This is a failure of leadership, really. This report indicates is a failure of leadership, just like the previous uh, report. So uh, genocide watch recommends about uh, what seven or six uh, different uh, point. Uh, I will read the whole. Uh, we almost done on this one. The United States and the European Union and others provide providers of arms to Ethiopia should cut off all weapons sales. Okay, Eritrea should withdraw all of its military troops from Ethiopia immediately. The United Nations, African Union, and the U.S. should offer to broke a ceasefire between the warring parties in Ethiopia and bring them to the negotiation table to end this civil war. Genocidal massacres by the Oromo Liberation Army against Amara and by the Eritrean and Ethiopian troops against Tigrayans must be investigated and the, the perpetrators brought to justice. The Ethiopian constitution should be amended to remove the ethnic region's right of secession. Ethnic Ethnic regional militia must be disbanded, minority rights must be protected, ethnic states must be protected in ethnic states. Ethiopian diaspora in the United States and Europe should stop sending money to support ethnic war. The Ethiopian government should open Tigray to aid groups to distribute food and medicine. So these are the suggestions, but some of the suggestions seems like bears uh, toward uh, uh, the Amaras, because they didn't mention, they mentioned uh, the Eritrean forces immediate withdrawal, but uh, the Amara special forces, uh, which is named by the uh, United States and others, about you know about committing serious crimes in Tigray region is not mentioned here. Is not mentioned here. So also they mentioned uh, Oromo Liberation Army, but they didn't mention the Amara Special Forces who committed crime against the warlords and other areas. So uh, and also uh, uh, the they recommended about ending uh, ethnic based constitution so it seems a little bit bad maybe somebody uh, working with a genocide group uh, maybe uh, some influence from the amara uh, community it seems like that you know the amara is special uh, force special force special militia is clearly mentioned reported by other medias uh, about the crimes they committed uh, in Tigray and in Wallo and other areas, but they ignored it in this genocide watch. And uh, so it seems a little bit biased uh, uh, against Oromos. Okay, that is uh, 
the report, the genocide watch, and uh, the problems Ethiopia is uh, uh, facing, and this, uh, recommendations. Some of the recommendations make sense, uh, you know. Uh, so that is the genocide watch. So let's quickly read a couple of remaining news and go to the video. Uh, Security Council extends uni, uni terms mandate for one year. The United Nations Security Council anonymously extended for one year the mandate of the United Nations political mission to support the democratic transition in Sudan. The small and limited uni terms was established last year to support the transitional government to achieve peace and build up democratic institutions. In a meeting held on Thursday, the 15-member body extended the mandate of the United Nations Integrated Transition Assistance Mission in Sudan, UNITAMS. UNITAMS uh, is a sh in a short, abbreviated, integrated Transitional Integrated Transition Assistance Mission in Sudan or UNITAM until uh, 3 June 2022. So they extended that uh, uh, mission for one year in Sudan to help them to form a democratic institution and the peace in that country. Okay, the last one. U.S. judge overturns California ban on assault weapons. A federal judge, a federal judge uh, Friday overturned California's 30 years ban on assault weapons, ruling that it violates the constitutional rights to bear arms. U.S. District Judge Roger Penny Tess of San Diego, California, ruled that the state's definition of illegal military style uh, rifles unlawfully deprives law-abiding Californians of weapons commonly allowed in most other states and by the U.S. Supreme Court. Govern Governor Gavin Newsom condemned the decision, calling it a direct threat to public safety and the lives of innocent Californian, period. The lawsuit, the lawsuit filed by the San Diego County Gun Owners Political Action Committee, California Gun Rights Foundation, Second Amendment Foundation, and Firearms Policy Coalition is among several by gun advocacy groups challenging California firearm laws, which are among the strictest in the nation. So Associated Press credited for this news. So that is the challenge we have in the United States, uh, respecting the ownership of, uh, you know, uh, guns for self-protection and the widely, uh, uh, widely occurring crimes uh, on American citizens. That's the challenge. How are you gonna stop this is a continuation of killing in different states, different cities, uh, and uh, how are you gonna balance uh, Second Amendment to own arm, to you know, for self-protection. That is a challenge. And plus, you have all these different organization, gun uh, uh, ownership advocates you know, for your freedom. How do you balance the freedom and the crime happening again and again in this country on children, on, uh, you know, companies, you know, uh, in different places. It's happening again and again. So this ruling is against the safety and the well-being of California citizens. Uh, it gives them a right to have this very serious AK, AK is it AR-15? 
just a military style, very dangerous, kills multiple time, multiple people at once. So it was banned for 30 years, but now it's open to the public to buy it and uh, under the, under the uh, uh, you know, uh, self-defense. So we're gonna, we're gonna continue to see this news of killing, massacre everywhere until something is done, uh, and, you know, until something strict uh, uh, done in the future about balancing the right to get armed for self-protection and the protecting the uh, innocent civilians from being killed by these very serious guns. Okay, that's uh, enough from the reading and the comments of concerned citizens media. Now I will share a video, Oromo uh, protest in uh, uh, Frankfurt, Germany, then conclude today's presentation. Thank you. Thank you again for your time. We are almost done. Okay, here we go, the video. So that it looks like uh, the enactment uh, of the Ethiopian government forces uh, abusing, using excessive force against Oromo uh, innocent people, uh, abusing them in such a way for no crime except from being a uh, Romo. Look here, so. They try to show what is happening in Ethiopia. And, uh, in this in Taking them from uh, prison, beating them, torturing them. Okay. 
was almost killing them uh, in such a way. Now this is dead. This is the dead of torture to me. By Ethiopian government forces. As I said, nobody, nobody are accounted for all the crimes committed. Everyone is free. Because they are ordered by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to kill, do whatever they want to do. No legal system to hold them accountable at this time. So he's repeating the same thing in a in a in a, in a German language to make this point more uh, understood by uh, by the people of Germany. It's a good strategy, really. This is a really a dramatic view, uh, should not be uh, uh, what with children, really. Even though it is an enactment, uh, we should be avoiding watching with uh, children.
Justice for Hajalu Ndesa. This is genocide. The Tigran to join the Oromo community uh, in this protest, which is a good sign. So all uh, ethnicities from Ethiopia background should join to change this brutal system in that country. The only challenge we are facing now is the Amaras. The Amaras joined Abi Ahmed, and uh, they are uh, uh, doing everything to uh, to stay in power. Uh, they don't care about the Oromos, the Tigrayans suffering under his leadership. So, so that's that's uh, uh, enough. If you want to watch the whole video, it's more than an hour. You can go to. OMN or uh, Shabo Media or other, uh, uh, you can watch from other medias. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to end it. It's a very long video. So if you are interested, you can uh, check it out from OMN or Kelo Media and uh, plus Shabo, maybe other medias. It is there. So. Uh, the big, you know, the message is for all Oromos to continue their demonstration and uh, other activities uh, against uh, Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed to end his leadership, to end his failed leadership in Ethiopia. Uh, nowhere is peace. Oromos are suffering, the Tigrayans are suffering, the Berishangles are suffering, the Walaitas are suffering. So all these uh, ethnicities, uh, all those suffering under Abiy Ahmed should unite, should unite with the global community to end the, uh, this brutal regime in Ethiopia. So the Oromos, especially uh, the diaspora community, you are doing good. Uh, you have been active for a while in Minnesota, Germany, UK, Canada, Calgary, especially. Uh, 
uh, the, uh, a little bit slow down in Australia. They have to wake up again because we all have to do our part until until Oromos are free from all these grave human rights violations and other atrocities uh, under the current leadership. So we don't have to rest until this uh, become truth in that country. Uh, accountability is lacking very much. Uh, Nobody is accounted for. Uh, open assassination in that country. Mass arrest in that country. No uh, rules of law, no uh, due process, you know, uh, the government can kill you, can take your property just by naming you, uh, uh, you know, uh, Onekshani or TPLF by using anti-terrorist law, as I reported before. Easily they can take your property even if you didn't do anything wrong. Just by being Oromo, you can be killed. Your property can be confiscated by Abi Ahmed because there is no rules of law in that country. And uh, your, your uh, you know, Oromo politicians are just kept in prison for almost a year now without no court date. And uh, we got, uh, you got, what, 143 witnesses? This may need 10 years, who knows? So there is no justice. Justice, uh, uh, justice is denied for this Oromo politician. They are waiting for Oromos uh, to fasten their movement, uh, to you know, let them free. They don't expect the justice system will uh, let them free. I don't think so. Maybe something coming up after election. We don't know. We don't know. So Oromos, Keep your movement, uh, demonstration, uh, social campaigning, and uh, you know fundraising. It's happening today, I think, for OLF. And uh, demonstration is uh, uh, coming up. One, the big one in uh, Washington D.C. I think in June 10. So be part of that. Be part of the fundraising. Be part of the campaigning until your people are freed from Abi Ahmed brutal uh, lead, uh, brutal uh, government and until you removed the Eritrean dictator forces from Ethiopia and uh, you will not see freedom in that country if you allow Eritrean involved in Ethiopian politics. The Amaras should understand that. For now they think they have upper hand but Dictatorship is coming to Ethiopia. You must stop supporting Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And stand with freedom, justice, equality in that country. Don't be misled by just my uh, minor gains, like in a Walqayt Agade or Seti Tumara. No, you are losing a big picture. As I said before, Sudan is deep into your territory. And the country is uh, in chaos and anarchy command post everywhere. So the Amaras, please join the Oromos against this uh, brutal leader. He is not a messiah anymore. So we have to join our forces and uh, to shorten their time. Plus the international community is with us. They are supporting us. So we have to work hard uh, for better system, better government in that country. So Keep the fight going on until freedom is achieved in that country. Thank you again for taking your time. Please share, like the video, share the video with friends and uh, family members. I appreciate your time again. See you with other news and comments next. So long, everyone.